Hi, welcome to Mindful Conversations. My name is Greg Dwyer. My guest today is Dan Straw. We were just talking before we went online and on air. He has been speaking since he was six years old. We've been talking about philosophy, and we wanted to share the conversation with you on Mindful Conversations. Dan, thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. So tell us the story. Like six years old, you were speaking in front of your church, did you say? Yeah, I gave my first public talk at six years old. They had to give a little step stool so I could see over the podium. I read one chapter of the Bible. It took me a couple of minutes, and that, and ever since then, I was groomed by what I learned later on in life was a very, very, very advanced public speaking course. Um, and so, after all of these years, it's turned out to be, wow. you know, really great. And I get to impart those bits of knowledge to the people that work for me. Wow. that's what, Now, what's your business? What's your background as far as your business? Uh, my background? Well, I, the first, I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and the first small business I ever had was a DJ company in Danbury, Connecticut, mm -hmm. all the way back when DJing was, we were competing against bands. Mm -hmm. Why should I hire you versus a band? Right. Those days are over. I got out of that business for a few years got into real estate investing. I started doing real estate education. Then I got divorced and wound up having to start from ground zero. Mm -hmm. I stumbled upon this, I, for the lack of a better term, franchise called DJ Trivia. Mm -hmm. I could see that it was just right up my alley. And from about seven years ago till now, I've grown it to where I have, you know, a nice little staff and I do shows, we do shows in Westchester County, in Fairfield County, Southern Litchfield County, and we bring fun to people's lives. Excellent. You were saying to me before we went on the camera that everybody that plays a game like trivia wants to win, mm -hmm. but your philosophy is what? Yeah, my philosophy is if you're having fun, you've already won. Mm -hmm. And I teach that to my staff, and we try to imbue that into our fans. Because the minute somebody gets too competitive, they don't enjoy the game themselves. And they kind of ruin the experience mm -hmm. for other players who get the concept of having fun and being a winner because you're having fun. Right. And who's your target audience who really hires you? Well, we get hired by restaurateurs. Mm -hmm. We have a near 100% track record with growing their slow night business. Mm -hmm. We're doing a show for a major pharmaceutical company in Danbury, Connecticut. I won't say their name. Okay. We've done local shows in Litchfield for various not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. Recently did a private party for some lawyers from White Plains who have a house up in Bantam. Anybody that wants to have fun while answering all different types of trivia questions mm -hmm. in a really consistent, really modern, and really enjoyable format is our target. Wow. Wow. Excellent. And how long have you been doing this business? I know you said uh, serial entrepreneur. How long have you been doing this? Seven years. Seven years. Okay. And how many people do you have working with you? Part-time, between the guys and the gals, about 10. Okay. Great. So what would you say to someone watching today, whether online or uh, on the television, what does it take to run a business? What's, what's the philosophy? Because we were talking about this earlier. Don't hit me with any small questions. We you, want the goods. We want to know. <laughs> oh, my God. What does it take to run a small business? One of my core philosophies is it's super important to work in your business. I'm sorry, work on your business, not in your business. Mm-hmm. I view my business like, well, right now, sort of like a teenager. And my goal over the next couple of years is to help it mature to the point where there are enough pieces in place that it can run independently of me. Okay. Uh, subtext to that is it, it, when you're trying to do that, it helps to have an understanding of what the framework is or the legs of a business that a business stands on and just... I try to be as positive and motivational for my staff at all times as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of that is when a host is doing his first show and he's on this microphone the first time, I don't say to him he made a mistake. Before he even starts his first show, I tell him, okay, I know we hired you as a host, but you're not a host. You're a voice actor. 
and I'm the director. And all I want you to ever do is try to be the best you can be. And after your first show, I promise you, your performance, if you've done the best you can be, done the best you can, your performance will be perfect. And in that way, we can grow on your success to greater success. And you're always trying to be a better host this time than last time. So keeping things positive, um, focusing on the details, mm -hmm. understanding that you need to grow your business to the point where it can grow by itself. Those mm -hmm. are that's, I, that's a lot, man. You ask me a lot. Yeah. So you're the director. So you have a host that's going to put on the event. So you're not putting on the event no. yourself. And so you're directing these people. So you sit in the audience and you critique them. How do you find these people? Are you... Well, that's an interesting question. It's difficult. I have... I know, I know some of my co-franchisees have difficult time getting them. I have a difficult time getting them. They talk about firing them all too often. They do. In seven years, I've never fired one. Okay. But I've always hired slow. Hired slow, which is important. Yes, and if you hire slow and you use the right principles, the right hu human resource management techniques, they say hire slow, fire fast, but I like to hire slow, never fire. I love that philosophy. Which one? Both. I mean, both ends. Uh, you know, I do this thing, motivational speaking, and I talk about it. I talk about the fact that if you hire the wrong person, it's going to cost the company a lot of money. Yeah, it is. It is. I I'm happy to say that the, well, the work, how, how often is it that you can get paid to stand up in front of an audience in a restaurant, read questions, make people smile? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a wonderful and, gig. Yeah. And you got. I try to think how many how many lattes would you have to serve at a local coffee shop to make the same amount of money you do in ninety minutes doing a trivia game? It, you, a lot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You, they're not getting paid. They're not getting paid richly. Right. It isn't like you do a trivia show and you walk away and you made two hundred dollars. Okay. But there's a high level of fulfillment. Yes. So a lot of the people that work for me are one of my. One of my guys who's now a friend is a dad trying to pay his daughter's way through Yale. Mm -hmm. and he's looking to do extra shows. Another guy is a guy who loves doing trivia. I've got another guy who's an actor. Oh, nice. And he likes it because it gets him out in front of a crowd. Yep. I have a, a woman who works for me. She does a lot of my HR, mm -hmm. and she's great. She's one of my – she's a phenomenal host, and she does it to – Get out of the house and get nice. away from the little monkey from time to time. And <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So here's here's a question putting you on the spot. If you were going to interview me or hire me for this, what, what would you look for? What would be the qualities? What would you ask me? What would you want to know to see if it would be a good fit? Right away, right out of the gate, you would have already spoken to my human resources person, and she and I would have discussed you. So in the discussion, I would know that you're full-time employed, mm -hmm. that you've been in the area and you're established in the area, Preferably that you have a college degree of some sort, you have some peripheral experience that could benefit you, and you're, you're reliable. Reliable right. car, those are some of the basics. Sure. sure, After that, as I'm interviewing you, I'm observing you for your conversationality. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to how you pronounce words. Nice. I'm looking for how well you interact. I will put you on the spot a couple of times. We do a an improv session mm -hmm. where I'll say I'm going to throw out a word and you create a story for it. Wow, I love it. And then I I was watching Jerry Lewis do tell us he told a story about what's called the announcer's test. Mm -hmm. And back in the do you, did you ever hear this? No, no, I, no, no. Back in the early days of radio when you were being interviewed for an announcer's job, they gave you this test. And the idea is, if we're going to have you there reading news for us, we want to be able to slide a piece of paper in front of you, and you go. Yeah. Well, this announcer's test is a list of continuously more difficult items to, to pr pronounce. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises, six pair of Don Alverso's tweezers, seven Macedonian soldiers dressed in full battle array, eight brass monkeys from the ancient sacred kiss of Egypt, Nine sympathetic, apathetic, diabetic old men <laughs> with a marked propensity for procrastination and sloth. And ten, jeez, uh, <laughs> I don't know, who haul stall around the corner of the quo of the quay of the quivery all at the same time. In seven years of interviewing like that, guess how many people have gotten it perfectly? I Less than you can count on yeah, ten. I would ten think. Figure, yeah. Do you do stand-up? I think you would be wonderful as a comedian. Uh, the only people that think I'm funny are... 
I, I just. I think you're I very funny, think, very you. charming, very funny, very intelligent. And I uh, mean, I only tell stupid jokes like, why did the Shetland pony go to the doctor? Why? It was a little horse. <laughs> 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 and then some of the jokes I tell, are, I have a really dark sense of humor. So, so do I. I'm kind of afraid I would insult too many people. Yeah, you, today you got to be politically correct for the most part. You know, you just have to make sure you don't offend anybody. How do you feel about that? I mean, you're in the public eye. You're public figure. Everyone in my company is specifically trained to stay away from politics, religion, and sex. Right. Our goal when we're doing trivia is to make fe people feel comfortable mm -hmm. and not make people, people feel divided. Yes. That said, I as the owner do take some liberties. My uh, comedians act upon the idea of the comedy area is a safe space that's not supposed to be a safe space. So it's safe for non-safety. Nice. That's how comedians are funny. Because yes. they're, they're surprising you and you know may, maybe they're picking on an area that outside of the comedy show, you be, oh, that's, that's just politically incorrect. But in that room, it's supposed to be. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm doing a show, I'll say, hey, this ain't no place for a safe space. Ah. But I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, you couldn't do that at a college. You know. <laughs> I don't really. Yeah. We try to keep things positive and fun and collaborative. We want to bring people together mm -hmm. and create a really great experience for them. Well, what, what I hear you saying is people aren't sitting there <laughs> at one of these events looking at their cell phone. They're communicating. They're thinking. They're connecting. I think you're connecting people, right? That's the at, gift. At the beginning of every event, we tell them that we have two rules. Rule number one is to have fun and that we'll take points off for whining, crying, crabbiness, or complaining, and continue to do so until morale improves. <laughs> Rule number two, okay. if you need to use your phone during the game, don't, uh. or stand elbows length next to us. And we tell them, we know, you're only, we know you're only texting, we know your answer is already in, we know that you're not cheating, but not everybody else does, so please keep your phone put away during oh, the game. Oh, I see, because people could be cheating. I never even thought of that, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah, I can tell you that in seven years of doing this, I've only really ever really suspected two people okay. of doing it, but I've had to ask. And after they play often enough, the time comes where they don't care about using the phone because Tom is, inter is interacting with Brianne because they've been running back and forth to bring up the answer slips enough, right. or they've seen each other at trivia, or there becomes these uh, intra-team rivalries, which are friendly, and so on. Nice. In the next uh, couple minutes that we have left, how do <coughs> folks get a hold of you, whether they have some questions or they just want to uh, maybe uh, ask you some trivia questions? If you could share that information, it would yeah, be wonderful. Yeah, best way to reach me would be on Facebook. Look for my fan page, DJ Trivia Rocks with an X. And you can comment through there or go to our webpage, which is DJ Trivia Rocks with an X dot com. Are you looking to actually maybe in the future sell this and move on and do something else? You, you mentioned. No, I'm actually looking to develop the fundamental legs of the business as a framework. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go into another business and use that existing framework and overlay. Oh, nice. Different set of tasks on this. An attorney can do legal work. Mm -hmm. the, the, the attorney doesn't care if they're doing it for this business or that. Sure. A human resources person hires people. Right. So as I fully develop these legs in this structure of the business, I hope to leverage it to support other businesses down the road. Wow, that is wonderful. Well, that's great. I, I really appreciate this. When we come back from the break, maybe we can talk a little bit about the philosophy. We were talking about NLP. Uh, and I'd love to have you come back as well because uh, you have a great wealth of information. So we will be back after this break with Dan. Stay tuned.